first speaker of the evening is a community builder and civic advocate who focuses on increasing government transparency. He is the program manager of digital services for United Way Calgary, and in 2009, he was named one of Avenue Magazine's top 40 under 40. And even more pertinent, he is the co-founder and chair of Pachucha Night Calgary, but he has never spoken at a PKN before. Please welcome DJ Kelly. Okay, I hate it when people talk beforehand, so let's just dive in. Uh, I'm a bit of an idiot. Uh, I freely admit it. If my dad or my wife were here, I'm pretty sure tonight that they would uh, they'd agree with this sentiment. Uh, I mean, even after seeing the stress of nine uh, of almost 300 people go through this. Uh, I still volunteered to do this. I have no idea why. Um, so this is a bit of a disclaimer, but it's also a little bit of the start of the story I want to tell you tonight. I've always been interested in politics. I had opinions that I was not afraid to share. Again, if my dad or wife were here, they probably would strongly agree with that statement. Uh, so what I did what anyone with uh, strong opinions would do. Uh, I started a blog so that everybody could hear my wonderful opinions. Uh, then things kind of spiraled out of control. I started doing a lot more like CBC Radio Metro column, new, Global News. But soon I found out that um, I didn't have enough information to be an expert. Um, others wanted me to be that expert, but I still couldn't do it because I was missing an awful lot of uh, uh, key information to be able to do it. What I want to do tonight is outline a bit of what I did to become a little bit less of an idiot. Now I read newspapers and I, I, and I watch the news. They always talk about what the politicians are up to. But I wanted a little bit more detail. Why were things the way they are? I needed more information and I, in order to be able to have more informed opinions. At the same time, the world was clearly changing. New technology had fundamentally transformed what was possible between a government and its citizens. This is a C-Click Fix. If, uh, it's a crowdsourced app that used to be a, uh, that is used as a citizen-led 311. You see a pothole, take a picture of it, it gets sent to the government, fixed, easy. Easy, not so easy. This is Yushahidi. Uh, it popped up as a platform built by coders over two days after they saw a blog post about the Kenyan election and the violence that was occurring after that. The platform allowed citizens to report crimes. It was then used uh, following the Haitian election, or the Haitian earthquake, uh, in order to allow citizens to report uh, about people in need. But these are not the things that a government should do, be doing. It really evokes that question of who owns the government? It's not really a rhetorical question. I believe that you own the government. Uh, uh, we are, the, uh, but we have a lot of questions about that government. For example, if we own it, why do we know so little about it? What are our success measures? Are the buses running on time? Are our recreation programs providing good value for money? We can do so much with technology, but government seemed like a big black box to me. I thought I knew a lot, but I realized I actually knew very little. This tweet was a turning point for me. I listened to the story, uh, uh, I listened to the story that's linked there, and I thought, yeah, why can't cities be more like the web? Why can't C Click Fix or Yushahidi be part of government? More importantly, if we can build tools like that, uh, why can't we use the data that we already have in our government in order to build better tools? For example, the very next day after the city of Vancouver posted a file on their website with the garbage and recycling schedules for every postal code in the city, uh, in the city Van Trash was created. Uh, it was made in less than 48 hours with a boring bit of information, and in a little less than two years, it had over 3,000 users. The day after I saw that tweet that I showed earlier, uh, I, had, I, a fresh new community association president, had a meeting with uh, my alderman, Joe Cece, and he offered me a ride to work. My awkward small talk in that meeting was about the idea of opening up the city's data to the public. Ditto a little while later on, a few weeks later on, when I met with Alderman Pincott and asked uh, uh, and brought up the same thing in order to change the subject to something lighter. I wanted to see this happen, and apparently so did they, because a few weeks later I found myself helping them draft this notice of motion. It went to council, uh, and then I got a call from administration to help uh, draft the response to that notice of motion. A while later, the City of Calgary opened their open data catalog. This is what it looks like now. It didn't look like that in the beginning, I promise you that. 
Um, this is uh, hundreds of data sets are about the city are included in there. I thought that that would sort of be the end of the story, but how wrong I was. Uh, it was actually only the beginning of the work that was needed. Sure, you own the data and, uh, and should have unfettered access to do it with, uh, as you please, but transparency is not free. I started to learn there are reasons why things are the way that they're done uh, currently, and they have nothing to do with technology. Looking, down at, the, uh, looking at the data, uh, uh, locking down the data was like the nuclear option that the city of Calgary had in order to address privacy current concerns. But being more discreet to anonymize, da uh, anonymize data make, uh, and make it public is hard and time consuming, and governments really aren't resourced to do that. They also were selling a lot of this data, so what do you do with a lot of that millions in missing revenue as a result? Someone had to solve these problems, so I went to work for the city of Calgary, where I worked with dozens of people to write council-approved digital strategy, rewriting and consolidating information management policies, <laughs> Massive organizational culture research project in designing an innovation lab. Six years of my life uh, uh, and the work is still not even close to done. But to think about what is and what could be now that citizens have access to that information, the possibilities are nearly endless. One data set up here uh, available, to the, uh, available to developers lets you see exactly where your next bus is. This could create a paradigm shift the idea of a bus schedule is now almost moot. People don't really care when their bus is supposed to come, they care when is it actually coming. <laughs> and now you can see that on your phone for free at any time. Back to my original point though, I wanted to have detail about what I was talking about. There is, uh, there is now nothing stopping me from reading the City of Calgary's business plan and clicking through uh, at the exact same time the information council, council is using to judge their performance. What's next? I still have no idea, but I now see a bridge to a place where we are better than we were, where journalists can dig deeper and we can have more fulsome conversations, and the public has better services, and where you, hopefully, will have an opportunity to be a little bit less of an idiot than I was. Thank you.